Hello, kitties. It's me, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> You're listening to Drop the Mic. <laughs> How would you feel about going to the mountains for Christmas? Grace really wants to get to know you guys. I don't want to leave you here with the kids if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, I'm feeling fine. I can do a couple days. That's Grace. Everyone committed suicide except for her. I heard something. What is this? The power's out. We're leaving. We can't leave. Please let me. We're stuck here. Welcome back to our humble San Diego podcast. This is episode 288, The Art of Lamenting, and we are your hosts, Wesley Swanson and Ryan Jimenez. What's up, man? How are you? What's up, man? How's it going? Good, good, good. Thank you uh, for joining us tonight. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a pretty wild episode, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So... Tonight's show will be an exploration of the 2019 psychological horror film, The Lodge. But before we descend into the vacation from hell, let's get ourselves warmed up. And now for a special news report. Brought to you by Drop the Mic. Um, so Horror Movie Scanners is being made into a show for HBO Max. Uh, the series is set in the world of the movie. David Cro- David Cronenberg is um, who wrote and directed the original film will serve as an executive producer. How do you feel about that movie, and how do you feel about that news? Um, of course, I like uh, the movie. Sometimes I'm I'm not the biggest fan of them re- rehashing stuff and just doing it in a TV form. It's like okay, if you're going to do something. Uh, do something different you know yeah like maybe in that universe i'm not saying they can't continue the continuity what have you but don't just retread the same stuff you know? <laughs> and it's wild that hbo max is doing it like all this shit that's going on with hbo and, and discovery and shit and warner brothers and now they're this is being made it's kind of odd yeah just and like, then they push back. They push back Salem's Lot too. Really? Yeah, they push that back. Um, I, I think they took it off their slate. Actually, it's not even slated to come out. I think it was supposed to come out. Um, I want to say the week that Barbarian came out. <clears throat> so it's kind of crazy that they're pushing all this stuff back and shelving all these things, and they're let's do a Scanners TV show that no one asked for. <laughs> 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 um but yeah kind of crazy um moving on to some more spooky news uh the first trailer for m night Shyamalan's new film <clears throat> uh knock at the cabin was released today the film stars dave batista jonathan groff ben aldridge and rupert grint it's based on the novel the Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay and focuses focuses on a couple and their young daughter who visit the, their cabin and then are attacked by strangers who believe the family is the key to preventing the apocalypse. Um, have you seen the trailer? Uh, I saw the thumbnail for it, but I haven't. Uh, I'm guilty of not watching it yet, but it does look interesting, you know. Yeah, it looks wild. It looks. It, it actually looks pretty good. Like it. It looks good, and I'm. I'm 
stoked for Dave Bautista to, to get a role like this. I think that he's very underrated <clears throat> as an actor. Um, hopefully M. Night Shyamalan can kind of return to his glory days. What do you feel? How do you feel about his last couple movies? <clears throat> well, there's what old and then what was before that? Um, wasn't it the glass and then the, the, uh, the visit. Oh, the visit. Visit was great. Definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. Glass, I felt... <clears throat> I was a little disappointed with how they tied up everything uh, with those mm-hmm. characters. Like, I felt like they deserved more um, than their, you know, what, what they gave us. But uh, it was okay. And then the Old... I think I told you this maybe on air, maybe not on air, but Old was good but with the reveal i was just like oh yeah i'd be like we could have wrote this script <laughs> i think you did tell me that yeah i haven't seen um i haven't seen glass yet i think i kind of dropped the ball on it i think i got kind of put on the back burner and i wasn't too stoked for it so i, I never i never saw it um but yeah hopefully this 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 is good. It looks really good. I suggest you go see the trailer and all the listeners go, go and check it out because it looks rad. So um, in, some, in some Chris Pratt news, Nintendo announced that the first teaser trailer for the Super Mario movie will premiere on October 4th at New York City Comic Con. I think we've already talked about this on air, but for those of... of for, for the listeners who don't know, what do you think about Chris Pratt getting that that role? I think it's super random, but uh, you know he's a he's a funny guy. I feel like he's somebody who's obviously uh, how do you what's what would be the word uh, very versatile? Yeah, um, you know, and uh, if he got the role, he must be doing something. Hopefully, good. And, yeah, and not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, dude. I think this has the potential because of how big Nintendo is and how big Mar- Mario the character is, and all those characters in it. I think it has potential to be huge, and especially because I think Illumination is doing it right, and they all they know how to do is make billions of dollars on animated films. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> um, and so a little bit, I don't know if you heard about this last week in a little bit of uh, wrestling news. It was announced that Logan Paul will, will wrestle Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal Championship at WWE's Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia in November. Um, I think that it's a little too, too soon for him to be getting a push like that especially with him only having two matches under his belt i think at this last wrestlemania which was good it was a good match with the miz and um and then this summer sam when he went up against the miz that, that match was was awesome and i think he has the potential to be i don't like i'm not a fan of him but i think he has the potential to be a huge superstar i just don't know how i feel about him getting this big push to fight for the universal <laughs> universal championship already yeah it's like dude <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> I, agree, um, I agree with you he has a shit ton of natural ability but it's kind of like <clears throat> in the same way like what we've discussed before with with what happened with david arquette it's kind of like dude you can't just walk into this industry that's been around for so long before you and then just get handed all of these opportunities without putting in the work that everyone else has you know what i'm saying yeah exactly i think um i've said it before that i think triple h has done a lot for wwe in the last two months three months that he's been in charge i just feel like this is kind of a kind of like a cash grab money grab since it's like the one of the bigger pay-per-views and they have a big contract with, with Saudi Arabia and having that crown jewel there. Yeah. Um, so they want those, those numbers, but we'll see. I'm sure it'll be a good match. I'm sure Roman Reigns is going to fucking win. They're not going to, I don't think they'll give him those titles, especially with them saying that 
it's it's crazy because they they do this and then they say I think at a, a press conference or, or Triple H was 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 interviewed and they he, they basically said that they want Roman going into WrestleMania this year like undefeated still. So you know damn well he's not going to lose unless he loses the belt by some ridiculous way, you know. Well, that <clears throat> that that's a that was a misstep to say that. Yeah. yeah. Here's to hoping the Rock beats his ass at WrestleMania this year. Um <clears throat> yeah. So, um so that's your so your predict, prediction is that Roman will retain the title. I I'm pretty sure he's going to retain all the way through WrestleMania. I think that he's going to lose like from what I understand, USA Network is kind of pissed off that they don't have like a permanent champion on the on the, the roster. Um, I, Bianca Belair, who's the women's champion, she's doing really well, and um, she's one of the big baby faces, and she's fucking awesome in the ring and on the mic. But they're kind of upset that they don't have a, a, a male champion on, on the roster on, on Raw because he's SmackDown and he doesn't really come. I think he does like one one SmackDown and one Raw every couple months mm -hmm. and he's not fighting at extreme rules this pay-per-view so he's, he's waiting until november for that that crown jewel so from what i know from understand they want to they want to keep him undefeated but they want to like take away the belts which doesn't make any sense but like i said we'll see how it plays plays on but yeah that's my prediction that he's gonna win my last bit of news um so the James Bond producers want the next 007 to stay in the role for at least a decade. They said they were they were quoted as saying today. So first off, how do you feel about that? And then second, I want to get your pick on who you think will be the next 007 or who you want to be the next 007. Um, as far as them, how do you say committing for a decade? That's fine. Uh, falls kind of in line with the usual um <clears throat> my pick for the next bond would be adria selba yeah that's my pick too before panson got got batman i kind of wanted him to play batman but i hope they go that route um it'd be it'd be awesome for him to get that <clears throat> even though he's a little bit older i still think he can he can pull it off um, so recently, the immortal director Martin Scorsese said that he had a blast with the newest Thai West film, Pearl. Here's exactly what he said. And I quote, a prequel to X made in a uh, diametrically opposite cinematic register, think 50 scope color melodramas, Pearl makes for a wild, mesmerizing, deeply, and I mean deeply, disturbing 102 minutes. West and his muse and creative partner Mia Goth really know how to toy with their audience before they plunge the knife into our chests and start twisting. I was enthralled, then disturbed, then so unsettled that I had trouble getting to sleep. But I couldn't stop watching. End quote. Coming from him, that's a pretty fucking awesome thing. I'm sure Ty West and Mia Goth are super stoked for that. Yeah. Um, I have I haven't seen it yet. I'm trying. I think we're gonna go see it tomorrow. But uh, I know you've seen it. Is that pretty much on par? Yeah, dude. Um, just having a you know the stamp of approval on a little tiny indie film like that from such a you know renowned um, veteran filmmaker that must feel amazing and. I couldn't agree more with everything that he said, especially with him being synonymous with talking trash on Marvel. It's awesome to, you know, <laughs> this little tiny production. They have to be like, yeah, fuck yeah, you know, like we're doing, yeah. doing something right. I uh, can't wait for the next, the Maxine one. It's funny. I feel like people are very divisive um, on, on Pearl where they either hate it or love it. We're living in a new, a new. I think we're living in a new golden age of horror, and it's 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 pretty cool to to, to see. All right, moving on. Uh, Co-creator and executive producer John Hertz of Cobra Kai opened up online recently with this statement regarding the new Karate Kid film that I talked about uh, last week in our news segment. Um, and a quote, the guys and I would love to make Karate Kid and Cobra Kai movies and hope to someday, but this one isn't from us or focused on the Cobra Kai cast. Don't know much about it, but wish it well. 
end quote. What do you think about this? 